Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and in this Einstein Analytics video, we're going to learn how to use the data flow to measure the number of weekdays that have passed between two dates. Now, a couple of things to cover first. Uh, this is weekdays and not business days, which means it will not take into consideration any holidays. It's just going to be, uh, it's going to count Mondays and, uh, through Fridays, and it's not going to count Saturdays or Sundays. Uh, next thing that we need to be aware of is that Einstein Analytics has no concept of time zones. This is something that has been in the works for a while, and we are going to see improvements on it in the future, but at the time of recording this video, it's just not a thing. So it, I did create also a version of this formula that runs in a standard Salesforce formula field, and uh, we're using that as kind of a baseline comparison to see if our calculations are correct. So in order to align those correctly, what I've done is I've taken my integration user's time zone and I've set it to GMT. This way the values that are gonna pull through the formula field for what the, uh, the date time of my created date is, is gonna be consistent with what we have in analytics. And this is gonna prevent any uh, false negatives. Uh, so you know where, where it would look like we screwed it up, but in fact we did it correctly. We're just basically realigning our time zone so that everything's on the same page. Uh, so next, let's take a look at the formula field that we've created in regular CRM. Why wouldn't we just use this all the time? Well, maybe uh, you know, you've only got access to Einstein Analytics data flows and you're not allowed to create additional fields in the, uh, the org proper, or perhaps uh, these dates are based on calculations in the data flow, or perhaps they are coming from external data sources, in which case you're not going to have the luxury of calculating this in CRM. But to do this, we've got a number of different options. Uh, just Google business days between Salesforce, and you're gonna find a formula like this. And they all function pretty similarly. Uh, there's different permutations of it. Uh, this is just one that I randomly Googled, and uh, they all rely heavily on the modulus function. So what the modulus function does is it gives you the remainder after division. So the example that I'm gonna keep using over and over again in this video is that 26 calendar days have passed. So how do we figure out how many weekdays that is? Well, first we're gonna divide by seven and get the remainder, because if we divide by seven uh, and get the remainder, we're gonna have three groups of seven and we're gonna have five. That's gonna be our modulus uh, when, we, you know, when we divide our 26 by seven. Uh, so if we take those, those first three blocks of seven, seven, and seven, well, it doesn't matter what the start or end dates of those are, we know that there must be exactly five weekdays within that block of seven. So for those first 21 days, we just say, okay, well, that's 15. We're going to divide by 7 and multiply by 5. No problem. That's the easy part. And that's what we actually see in this section of the formula right here where we have the floor function. We're dividing by 7, we're rounding that down, and then we're multiplying by 5. That's going to take a number like 26, and it's going to return something like 15. Now, we also have two different flavors of this formula. So it's only half as complex as it looks. And the two different variants basically say uh, if this in this if statement right at the very top. If I don't have a close date, we're gonna to need to measure created date versus today. That's the lower version of the formula. Or we take the upper version of the formula when we do have a close date, and we say measure the difference between created date and close date. The other factor of this formula is that we do need to measure against a fixed known date in the past. In this case, the formula is calling for uh, June 24th, 1985. It's a Monday. And I'm kind of inclined to think that whoever wrote this particular version of the formula, that must be their birthday, but I have no idea who it is. Well, when June comes around, happy birthday to you admin who wrote this formula. Uh, so anyway though, uh, what is this weird table looking thing here? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's a table. Because really, in order to perform our calculation, we have two variables. First, we need to know what day of the week our created date was on. And that's why we are doing this subtraction here and then taking the modulus. That's gonna give us this vertical axis right here of zero through six, where zero is a Monday, and then one through six is how many days our created date was offset from Monday. Then we're gonna do the same thing, measuring the difference between uh, close date and created date and taking that modulus of seven. And we're gonna say, what is the actual remainder after we did that math. So for example, with our uh, 26 business days, that's gonna be where our five comes into place, where day number 22 is going to be this uh, vertical axis right here, you know, what day of the week is that? And this gives us this, uh, this table right here of the 35 different permutations uh, that we can have for that. So this is gonna return a number that's gonna be uh, zero through six, and we're going to add that return to our um, to our raw difference, which is our base week difference, our 
uh, 21 becomes a 15, and then this is going to tell us how many additional days we need to add on top of that 15. So pretty straightforward formulas like this have been around for years and years and years. And uh, today we're going to actually try to reproduce this in Einstein Analytics. So I'm logged in as Batman in my trusty Dataflow editor in my Let's Play Developer org. And uh, this Enrich Opti's uh, node right here is from a different video where I covered uh, the date diff function. Uh, but we're going to be looking at this business days node right here. Uh, so again, we did also talk about how the Einstein Analytics integration user um, only sees things in GMT. If you need to be able to offset these results to your time zone, I have a different video covering that. Now, I've got a whole bunch of formula fields in here. Uh, and why did I do this? Well, because we could actually consolidate everything into one giant formula where we are constantly subtracting day epics and, you know, having case statements where we're either going to subtract, you know, the created date epic minus the closed date epic versus the created date versus now in second epics because that's what that is divided by 86,400. But I thought it was a lot easier to wrap my head around if I broke everything down into its companion parts. Now, the other um, important difference between how we did this in regular CRM and how we're doing this here is we're actually using three variables instead of two. In the previous uh, version of this, what we saw was we had a table that was created by two different variables, the start date um, day of the week and the remainder after doing modulus. Uh, and whereas here, we're actually going to use the start day of the week, the end day of the week, and that modulus remainder. So let's take a look at some of the supporting formulas uh, that I've created to kind of help this all happen. So business days, uh, that's just going to be the, the, or for start day, that's just going to be the day of the week uh, of the created dates, epic second, uh, using the to date function. Um, I believe that if you change uh, the start day of the week in your schema file, it could make this whole thing blow up. Uh, so make sure that if that is something that you're doing, um, check and see the returns. You may need to adjust the formula based on that. Uh, but you know, this works for me, um, assuming that Sunday is, uh, always going to be a one in that instance, which is what we get when we use the day and week function, uh, with the SQL editor or in the data flow. Uh, so next I'm doing the exact same thing on, uh, my close date. I don't have a different variation of, of this one for figuring out what the uh, the what it is if uh, the record is still open, but that's pretty simple to add. I didn't bother doing it because I wanted it to be like just visually easy to wrap your head around. But what you would do is you would say, you know, case if close date is null, then give me this with now instead of the close date epic seconds, else give me this. So then the next thing we do is we actually just measure uh, the number of actual days between. Uh, no modulus, nothing here. This is really more just for a validation. Uh, and what I'm saying is, well, if the close date uh, is null, then give me uh, the epic of now minus the created date plus one. And then we got to divide that guy by 86,400. Um, and then that's going to give us the number of days that have passed. Uh, and I just realized we've got a little bit of an error. This is plus one second. And what we actually want here is plus one day. So we're going to wrap that guy up like that and put a plus one there. Uh, otherwise, give me, uh, you know, the closed date minus the created date plus one. And in these instances, I'm using the day epic. So again, the only reason why I'm doing this uh, division by 86,400 is because that's the number of seconds in a day and I actually want the day epics, but uh, now returns, when we use date to epic, it's gonna return a second epic. And another important thing to watch out for is uh, in the data flow editor here, I'm using date to epic on the now function because now is returning a date. Whereas in our SQL editor on a dashboard level, now is going to return epic seconds and not a date field. So go ahead and look at the next guy. So remainder, uh, it's that same, we take that days between that we have, uh, and this is exactly like when in the regular CRM we were doing the subtraction on, uh, you know, created date or closed date minus created date. But here we already have that calculated. So we're just gonna take the mod seven of that. And what this says is divide it by seven, give me the remainder. Uh, next is gonna be base weekdays. That's that part at the bottom there where we said, okay, well, take the uh, the number of days between, divide it by seven, round it down, and then multiply it by five. So in my example again of 26, this is going to return 15 because we're gonna divide by seven, 
which is going to give us, you know, three and change. We're going to round that down because we got three whole weeks. We're going to round that down and multiply by five. That's going to give us our 15. So we'll get to uh, we'll get to the offset in just a minute. But then what this is going to be uh, is it's going to be the remainder. But we're going to do that calculation to determine how many days of that remaining five were actually weekdays. And then we do have our final calculation of uh, business days open where we're just doing offset plus base weekdays. So now let's take a look at that offset formula. And it's a little hard to read in here. So I've got right here in uh, Notepad++, uh, this is gonna be the point where you wanna pause the video and uh, write this down because I will not be posting the code in the comments. Uh, YouTube comments don't actually allow me to post the less than and greater than symbol. And also, this is where I'm going to give a shout out to uh, my friend and colleague Chris Bolden for, uh, you know, helping me figure out this formula. Uh, I had it pretty close, but it was still off. And, uh, you know, unlike me, Chris actually did take math in college. Uh, so he was able to help me uh, kind of get this one uh, shored up and finished. So uh, what are we actually doing here? We're taking our remainder and we're subtracting the number of weekend days that were actually passed through on uh, in that remainder. And unlike the, uh, the standard Salesforce formula that we saw for this, we're actually gonna be using three variables instead of two, which allows us to just process it in a simple series of rules. So uh, the different variables that we're gonna be using is going to be that remainder, which is what's left after we do uh, you know division by seven. And then the other uh, two variables that we're going to use is, again, like we, like, like we covered before, the day of the week that we started on and the day of the week that we ended on, uh, where a Sunday uh, is going to be a 1 and a Saturday is going to be a 7. So first we say, well, if the end day is a 7 and the start day is a 1, well, that means that you know, I started on a Saturday and I ended on a Sunday. So this is gonna actually roll over. And uh, the same with these start day minus end day equals one. This is where we're actually like going, you know, you gotta think that the next value after a seven isn't gonna be an eight, it's gonna be a one. But because we're doing math on that, you know, we, we had to kind of have this rule at the beginning to account for those rollovers. Uh, and, you know, since we've got our, our offset already calculating uh, inclusively, uh, we can actually just say, well, we don't need we don't need anything subtracted from this. The remainder is going to be just fine. So we output a zero. So this first rule is to take care of those rollovers. Uh, next, we're going to say that if the end day is less than the start day, well, then take two off because we pass through uh, both weekend days in the process. Um, otherwise, we're going to say, well, when start day is greater than one and the remainder plus the start day is less than eight then give me a zero because again in these instances we don't uh we haven't crossed any weekend days at all uh and otherwise we know that we have passed exactly one uh weekend day because that's all the combinations that are left and uh you know do i need to you know do i need to wrap my head around all this do you need to wrap all uh, your head around all this well it's fun but it's ultimately not really necessary you can just copy the formula as it exists and uh, you know you don't even have to take my word for it that it works because we're actually going to prove that it works. So how are we gonna prove that this works? Well, because we've already digested that SFDC business days formula. So we know that this tried and true method that's flowing through is gonna return the exact same value as what our calculation does. And so let's take a look at uh, a table of how this all turned out. So uh, first what we've got here, uh, we've got this days between, that's the raw number of days. Uh, and from that, we get also our base weekdays by dividing this by seven, rounding down, and then multiplying back up to five. So again, with our example of 26, this is where we're gonna see our 15 is gonna be in the base weekdays versus our 26 of days between. Uh, so then we've got our start and our end days. Uh, we've got our remainder and our offset. So we can see in this case, you know, hey, I started on a Saturday and I ended on what, Wednesday? So in that case, I've got a remainder of six, but my offset is gonna be four because it passed through uh, two different weekend days, Saturday and Sunday. And we can look and see here, validating this out, that uh, we have a one-to-one -one match between the values that are the business days open and the SFDC days that are open. And there is one exception to this, and that is that if the, uh, if the business days open, if, it, if it's a negative number, then the whole thing like just craps out on you. So 
first off, I'm the mindset that you should never have a close date that is less than your created date. Uh, that's what we like to call bad data. And if you want, you can try and build the formula to accommodate for this. The way that you would do that is by uh, taking absolute values on your days between instead of uh, just doing subtraction, in which case you're going to need a negative one instead of a positive one to get your inclusivity. Um, and it was just a pain in the butt that I didn't feel like accounting for because this is just a video that I do in my spare time as a hobby. But please understand that that is a known limitation of this approach. So again, if your starting day is after your ending day uh, and the ending day is in the past, then uh, you are going to get these wonky results that are not going to actually give you the, uh, the true outcome while the standard Salesforce version of the formula does return uh, the correct value. So uh, we do start to get correct returns uh, as soon as we actually have correctly aligned. So for example, if I start today and I end today, then we do actually see the right return. Looks like I've got one row of bad data where it started today and it ended tomorrow and we're still counting that as a zero. Uh, but you know, not entirely sure why that happened. Uh, start today and end today on this one uh, did work out well. We might be uh, actually just seeing some, some time zone offset shenanigans there. So not 100% sure, uh, but you know, it happens. It's not the end of the world. Uh, looks like that might actually be the case because of the timestamp right on this one, why this one worked and uh, this one did not. So, uh, you know, again, uh, this isn't a million percent bulletproof, but as soon as we start getting past that, that, that threshold between zero and, and, and the negatives and moving up into the positives, we do see that all the way down, we are getting matching values uh, between what we see in standard CRM and what we see in our data flow based calculation. So if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and as always, thanks for